I'll leave this question up for uh, anybody to answer, but there's a handful of people asking about which uh, steroids have helped over the uh, powerlifting careers of everybody up on the podcast right now. Steroids? Oh, yeah. my God. Well, obviously, many uh, lifters use uh, testosterone, but, um, you know, getting into, you know, what people take and everything is uh, a little bit of a, a hairy situation. And yeah, it's like, cause, uh, cause it's pretty basic, though, too, you know. Every roid, I think, the basic of it is testosterone. Right. And it's when people start mixing and matching and making up these weird names of stuff they're taking and that that's when problems more problems occur well it, it it always uh you always have to go back to your training you know and people that are natural hate hearing that because they're like oh they think, they think there's some secret going on but steroids do help they do help you get stronger um but just adding in more and more without really knowing what you're doing is is a big mistake and there's a lot of forums out there and there's a lot of books uh, you can read about them further online to, to learn more. But most of what I've seen in the history of powerlifting and most of the people I've ever communicated with, uh, testosterone, DECA, D-ball, has always been a very standard stack for somebody to do for a powerlifting meet. From what I've heard. Basics. Yeah. Allegedly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Smoke's on. Smoke's on IGF-2. Smokey. Is that IGF-2? something new? Yeah. Yeah. I would say it's, you... it's it's only grown body hair so far. <laughs> it's grown from fecal matter. Oh. It explains his shitty personality. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy doesn't have a microphone. You're, you're He's right just getting here, killed. Nope. No, nothing smoky. Gave an opportunity. Yep. He's he's out of he's out of it out of his element. But if, if, if when we go back to that, look at see in the old days they used to say, well he can only do that because he takes something, but. Look at the raw numbers now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, raw. And no, yeah. look at the yeah. raw, raw numbers in the IPF and in, in like USAPL. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Look at look at some of the monsters doing some big lifts. So obviously that's not really the all and be all. Right. Or else you wouldn't have those guys. Oh, that's insane. And that's that's what I have to say too. Is like not every guy who's getting drug tested uh, could pass could pass all these tests all the time. So like, there's got to be some of these people have to be. Uh, there's always going to be. Yeah, there's always going to be people that are doing them, right? But um, my point is, accept the possibility that some of the people that don't take anything are beating records that have existed from people that were taking stuff. Yeah, it's okay. Well, that, that, that would be that would just be your own fragile ego saying it can't yeah. happen. This guy, nobody wants to. You know, if if your record gets broken, your record gets broken. It's nice that if it if it takes like thirty years to do it. Yeah. And the manner that it's done in but to to use your own ego and say there's no one that can lift more than me unless he's juiced right that's just bullshit some you know there's some guy in his farm picking up the cow and walking around with it that doesn't even know how to lift yet yeah and and if you think that you need to take them to do a 700 pound deadlift um you definitely you definitely don't because there's a lot of people that are Kaylor Wollum posted a video the other day conventional deadlift 705 he's like i don't know 15 or 16 at the time you know there's a lot of people that are picking up big ass weights uh that are either getting drug tested or that are uh, new to the sport um that in my opinion i don't think they touched anything it's hard to really ever know you don't really ever know but like you look at someone like jen thompson i mean how many times that woman been tested see those shoulders yeah they're it's it's amazing but she's benching over 300 pounds as a a female that Mm -hmm. weighs like 120 something pounds 130 pounds or whatever it is so i think 132 or whatever the cutoff is now they changed the weight classes but there's some remarkable weights uh kimberly walford being moved around and if you're young and you and you haven't you don't have uh much of a foundation as we talked about earlier uh there's really no point in uh looking into it no just say wow nice lifting (laughs) right that's it Got any questions over there, Andrew? How about some poop stories? I know you just took a picture in our. Oh, uh, I, I told Marcus a, a, it was almost a disaster. We're disaster talking about, pants. We we're talking mm-hmm. about cramping. Mm. And I said I was dieting for a contest, and I was having trouble pooping. Oh no! So I'm sitting on the <laughs> toilet, trying to push. Every ab I had locked up, horribly, and it tighter and tighter. So I'm, I go back trying to do a back bend, and right before they were about to pop loose, my erectors cramp up. So I'm like, oh, fuck. So I go down here, abs cramp back up, push off the sink in the uh, windowsill, 
triceps lock up. And when I stand up all the way, my glutes and hamstrings lock up. I hit the ground, like whining in pain, trying to keep the, the turtle from getting out of the out of the shell back there. And my mom knocks on the door and starts coming in before I'm screaming at the same time, trying to keep it in. She'd be like, honey, what are you doing in there? Yeah. The same thing she knocked on your door when yeah. you were 13. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Anything else you want to leave us with here at the end? Let's see. What did we learn today? You're uh, short, no longer angry little troll. Mm -hmm. And you lost your trainer. God damn it. I Aww. win. What if I buy your dinner? Mm -hmm. That's better. There you, um, there you go. No, it's just we learned a, a, a lot of basic stuff that's not put into play. Mm -hmm. We learned the value of sticking to routine, and that's like – Make up a routine that it has to be doable over time. Right. Each week has to build upon it. If if it's not where you start, it's where you finish, obviously. But you don't have to set a, an all-time world record every time you go out. You just have to build upon that. Let's say one cycle, you started your squats off at 500. The next cycle, let's, start, you, let's say you started off at 510. Let's say the first week you did two sets of 10. You actually did 200 more pounds total volume right then. Right. And then if you add in your assistance exercise and you went up on your assistance exercises. Now, so do that over 12 weeks and look at the amount of total weights you lifted over that time that you got this part of your pec, this part of your pec, this part of your shoulder, that part of your shoulder, both parts of your triceps, your biceps, your lats. Oh, I mean, touch me. Yeah. So you got all those parts strong. So in the end... Look at what you built. Right. It's not like, oh, I just got my bench press up, you know, 10 pounds at the end. No, if you built all that in the end and all those parts get stronger and bigger, what did you build? You see see what I'm talking yeah. That's what I'm talking about. And that's, that, that's one of the biggest values I think I did. And I just kept going and kept going and kept going and kept going. But at the same time, you, what was that movie with Jim Carrey, 23, oh, where yeah. like when he <laughs> walked in his room and he had all those numbers all over the walls? Yep. I would do that with routines. I had hundreds of pieces of paper. You had everything all written. Huh? Yeah. You know how number how many number two pencils I went, <laughs> what is it, Ticonderoga pe pencils or whatever, yeah. that I went through making up my routine. It was always in pencil because I would always have to erase and go back and learn how to do it. You wrote down like notes too. Like if you did something and liked it, you wrote it down. Had if, to. If something popped up in your head, like oh, I should try that. Yeah. Even like the way that you did um, your your stiff leg dead, the way that you did your bent over rows, like they all had like a little finishing touch on them, and it's probably just trial and error and taking notes on Always, what, it's, it's, what felt good. Yeah, exactly. What felt good, what felt natural, and um, you build and it changes the whole time. Someone like uh, like Mike T. Mike yeah, Trichero is actually a, like a genius. He really is. And But he's always experiment, 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 because there's always going to be a way to get better. Right. And that's what we all do. It's just the little tweaks that are going to have the biggest impacts.